In their 36-hour rebellion, Yevgeny Prigozhin and his Wagner group showed the world that Vladimir Putin's grip on power may not be as firm as many thought after all. Before heading a ruthless and brutal band of mercenaries, Prigozhin served time in jail and then started a catering business, one that made him rich, thanks in no small part to his former patron in the Kremlin. This is billionaire Yevgeny Prigozhin. After serving time in prison, he became Putin's caterer. So where does the former convict's money come from? In the 1990s, he opened a high-end restaurant in St. Petersburg. That's where he met Vladimir Putin and began winning lucrative catering contracts from the government. In 2015, for example, his company secured major contracts worth over $1 billion to feed the Russian army. Alexei Navalny's anti-corruption foundation accused him of corrupt business practices. New opportunities arose for Pigozhin when Russia annexed Crimea in 2014. That's when he co-founded the Wagner Group, a private military company. It has fought alongside the Russian army in Ukraine. And the Wagner Group's soldiers have also been involved in other conflicts. In Libya, Syria, the Central African Republic, and Mali, where they are also securing access to some resources. Between 2017 and 2021, commodities companies controlled by Prigozhin generated over $250 million in profit. The bulk of that comes from deals in oil, gold, diamonds, and other commodities from Africa and the Middle East. The Wagner Group has been on Western sanctions lists for years as a result of human rights abuse allegations. Those include murder, torture and rape in almost every country where it has been known to be active. And in order to be able to do all these things, the Wagner Group received a lot of money from the Russian state. That's what the country's leader, Vladimir Putin, said this week. Meanwhile, I want to note, I want you all to also know about this. Support for the entire Wagner Group was fully provided by the state, from the defense ministry, from the state budget. We fully funded this group. From May 2022 to May 2023 alone, the state paid Wagner the equivalent of more than 900 million euros for maintenance and incentive payments. For more, let's bring in Maximilian Hess. He's a fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute. Welcome to DW Max. Now, if uh, Vladimir Putin says the Wagner Group has received around 900 million euros, almost $1 billion from the Russian state recently, uh, put that figure into perspective for us. Certainly. Uh, you know, $1 billion in Russia takes you a long way. It's hundreds of kilometers of road paving, uh, a significant portion of uh, spare banks, uh, normal annual profits. Uh, it is a large and substantial sum. What is, you know, so interesting about it is that he also said around a billion dollars uh, were funneled to Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head of Wagner Group, through Concord, his catering and food services company, from which he originally gets the name um, Putin Chef. Uh, but I think it's also also important to note that Wagner in Africa is seen as a self-sustaining organization. It has contracts for um, the extraction of mineral resources in the Central African Republic and Sudan mm -hmm. and elsewhere, as well as training of security forces there and is earning money. And so that's not included in these $2 billion that in the last year alone uh, were, according to Putin himself, funneled to Prigozhin. Is it clear where exactly this money has come from, how the Kremlin financed or helped finance the Wagner Group? Well, Putin said in his statements that some of it came from the Ministry of Defense budget. Uh, but of course, over the last year and a half, the Kremlin has stopped sharing a lot of data and even before then didn't share all of it, certainly not on defense spending. Um, so there's significant uncertainty there. But, you know, him taking responsibility for Wagner is particularly important as well, because the group was originally founded around 2014 and then used in Africa part to be able to give the Kremlin plausible deniability, at least to uh, its fellow travelers into state media that all of Wagner's activity was actually by the Russian state, and now Putin is claiming responsibility for that. 
Yeah, let's expand on that, uh, uh, Maximilian. What does it mean when Putin acknowledges that the Russian state has been financing a group which ultimately uh, turned against him? Well, I think it raises real questions about uh, his loyalties within the elite. You know, we saw Putin yesterday go out and do this sort of uh, meet and greet during a visit in Dagestan, in Derbent, uh, which is very out of character for him, particularly in recent years. Uh, it's been well known that journalists, even senior officials and other government representatives have had to quarantine for extensive periods of time. So I think this whole series of events have raised uh, a lot of deeply uncomfortable questions for him. And we saw that in his last two addresses, which for me have Having, you know, watched Putin's speeches for the better part of the last 20 years were uh, remarkably almost out of character with what we know about him. Uh, Vladimir Putin also says that uh, Prigozhin's catering business uh, received around one billion dollars from the Russian state. We, you mentioned that. Now, these payments, uh, uh, Putin says, would be investigated now. What does that mean? Well, uh, you know, another one of the interesting statements Putin gave um, the other day was he said, you know, uh, well, I hope they haven't stolen too much. Corruption is an acknowledged part uh, of the Russian economy. And even, you know, clearly the highest levels of the Russian state don't deny that it exists. But there are a lot of concerns now. And we've heard a number of comments from uh, oligarchs and people in the Russian elite off the record to the international media worried about potential purges. There have been rumors now and over the last sort of 12 hours from some uh, more in-the-know sources that um, uh, Surovikin, the Russian general who was previously in command in Ukraine, is now the deputy commander who had been seen as a Wagner ally, may have been arrested. Uh, so this really sets the stage for uh, potential detentions of Prigozhin's supporters, allies, and even purges of elites who Putin views as disloyal. So you believe a financial investigation uh, might not be the biggest problem uh, which Yevgeny Prigozhin is facing currently? Uh, no, certainly. I, I think he faces a lot more serious problems. You know, uh, what was so out of character about Putin's statements was his willingness to, at least in them, for, say he was, he didn't mention him by name, but say that he was willing to forgive and go through with this pardon of Prigozhin so long as he went uh, in exile to Belarus. He then later referred to him just as the head of the Concord Group. He tends not to like to use the names of people who he's fallen out with. He's never said Alexei Navalny's name, the opposition activist uh, who is in jail in Russia for for example. Um, but, you know, I, the security concerns are, are, are would really be foremost at, at my mind, both for his allies uh, and for Prigozhin himself. So Prigozhin is uh, in exile in Belarus. Russia has offered Wagner fighters to join the state military or go to Belarus as well. Is Wagner dead now? Well, I think it's important to remember that Wagner really was a network of companies and organizations, and Prigozhin was the figurehead at the top of it, uh, but its activity from its units in Ukraine to the operations in Africa that we discussed uh, were set up through a whole bunch of different corporate networks. Um, Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, has said that activity in Africa will continue. Um, but, you know, if you remove the, the head of the snake, how the rest of the body withers after is very hard. Um, um, to judge. Uh, I think that that network is something that the Kremlin will try to keep um, and adapt into a way that it can still continue to use it, um, but it will be wary of the threats from within now. And uh, that raises real questions about um, whether some of those operations are sustainable or whether they will end up being future um, sources of disloyalty and threats to the Putin regime. Maximilian Hess, fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute. Max. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.